Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Let's start our video with an army story in which our OP showed ingenuity and completed the task of his commander, but how he did it, you'll know after a short break. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. I don't care what you do, just fix it. Many moons ago, when I was in the army, I was stationed in Europe, Germany to be more specific, and as a regiment, we would go on field exercises, a lot. At the time, my job was to drive a jeep for the first sergeant and pretty much go and do whatever he wanted at all hours of the day and night. Mostly, I got to drive around all over the countryside and my jeep has heat and a radio, so I felt it was better than sleeping in a tent. Anyway, we'd been prepping to go out on yet another field exercise, but my jeep was having issues. It'd just randomly stall and wouldn't restart for 15 to 20 minutes at times. As you can imagine, in the hurry up and wait world of the US Army, that's not acceptable. But I thought I had it under control. I was wrong. We had about an hour before we were moving out and old unreliable stalled and wouldn't restart. My platoon sergeant came up to me and said, we're going in an hour. I don't care what you've got to do, but fix that effing Jeep. Go to the motor pool and don't come back until you do, got it? Me being the lowly private could only respond with a hearty, yes, sergeant. I got the Jeep started a few minutes later and proceeded up to the motor pool, opened the hood, and I have to admit looked befuddled as the Jeep just ran on and on without so much as a hiccup. After staring at it a few minutes, I thought to myself, it has to be the distributor or the coil, but really, WTF am I gonna do? Then I noticed that another troop left one of their Jeeps in the motor pool and a plan came to mind. I'll just take all the parts off their Jeep and my problem solved. It's all the army stuff, I just moved it around some, right? So I took a few parts, Jeeps were pretty easy to work on, fired up the Jeep and moved on back down the hill to the company. No sooner had I pulled up than I met by my platoon sergeant and he had questions. You're back? That was quick. Is it fixed? Yes, I fixed it. Good. What'd you do? Ah, uh, well, just trust me. You don't want to know. Actually, yes, I do want to know. What'd you do? No, you don't want to know, but it's fixed. Now yelling, GDOP, what did you do to the effing Jeep? I stole the entire ignition system, distributor and all, off of L Troop's Jeep that they left in the motor pool. A moment of silence. You did what again? I took all the stuff I needed off a Jeep that was left in the motor pool. Good God, I didn't want to know that. He turned around and left. After the exercise was over, I found out he wrote me up for an award for quick thinking, but never mentioned it again. Awesome story. I'm wondering which Jeep model and engine it was. And our next story. They could have gotten $80 of stuff for $1, but they wanted separate transactions. Let me preface with a quick rundown of our exchange policy at work. You bring the item and receipt in within 14 days and you can get an exchange for the money value of the item. It's no refund and no store credit, so on the day you come in you need to shop around. We can't give back more than $2, so we encourage shopping as close to the actual amount of the items as possible. Now, I served a group of three today, two of them had exchanges. They loaded up all of their items together onto the counter, exchanges first. I didn't ask if they were all together, I just assumed they were being smart and pulling together their purchases in exchange to get the most bang for their bucks. I ring through the exchanges, which comes out to $80 they must spend, and then I ring through all of their items. Their total comes to like a dollar, and I ask which of them is paying. This is when they tell me they want their transaction separate. I tell them if I separate it all, they'll end up paying more, so it'd be better for one of them to just pay the few dollars rather than they all pay separate. They got aggressive and told me they have to pay separately. They had already been giving me the cold treatment, none of my attempts at giving good customer service were improving their sour moods, so I decided, screw it, I'll do these separately. The first guy's exchange was only $10, and he paid $24 because he spent more than the exchange. The last guy paid $17, no exchange. The middle guy, though, his total was minus $40, which I can't give back, so I told him to A, shop for another $40, or B, take some items off the exchange and come back another time to shop for the $40. He doesn't realize quite what happened yet or what he and his mates missed out on. He just takes option B. I give him back enough items where he only has to pay a dollar, and he pays. 
He and his guides leave, smug and angry as ever. I wonder if they'll ever realize their blunder. Perfect example of stupid tax. And our last story. You're my lawyer, do something or you're fired. Whatever you say, Karen. I'll be me, entitled P-head, kid, E-K, and mother, not so dearest, E-M. We had a vehicle get impounded with some serious damage due to drunk driving. The driver of the vehicle was not the registered owner. It sat in our yard until about three days ago when we got payment and released said vehicle. E-K showed up on Monday, hoping to release said vehicle, showed up with nothing but $10. What he didn't know is that since it was impounded by the police, he needed a release certificate, and since it had been in our yard for a month, the price was definitely more than $10. $10 doesn't even cover the administration fee. EK waited patiently in line, waiting for me to finish with the previous customers, so I didn't expect much from him in regards to temperament and attitude. When I was done with the previous customers, he came up and said he was here to get his vehicle. I pulled up the vehicle information I gave him and realized he wasn't the registered owner, and by law, we can't release it to anyone who isn't the registered owner. I told him so. The conversation that follows is, EK, it's my car. I'm the only one that drives it, so it's mine. Me. That may be the case, but you're not the registered owner, and we need the registered owner to sign our paperwork. EK. But it's my car. I want it. I can pay for it. Me. Well, judging by the fact that you're holding $10 in your hand, you can't, in fact, pay for it. $10 is more than enough. Give me my car. The current outstanding balance owing on the vehicle is $468. Your $10 doesn't cover that. EK looks at me with a state of confusion on his face and proceeds to leave. I figured that was the end of it. I was so wrong. Not even an hour later, I receive a call from EM, the actual registered owner of the vehicle, we went through the whole vehicle, make, model, and color, EM. Why is my son telling me $10 won't cover the costs? That would be because the current amount owing is $468. How is it that much? It's been here for over a month now. We have storage fees for vehicles impounded for drunk driving and various other things. It wasn't there for a month. And what does drunk driving have to do with any of this? It's been here for over a month. We picked up the vehicle on February 27th. The driver of the vehicle was pulled over after hitting a telephone pole and blew over the legal limit, hence why the vehicle was impounded for drunk driving. How has my son been getting around for a month if the vehicle was there, huh? Answer me that. I have no idea, seeing as how I don't know you or him. I do know that the vehicle has been here for over a month, though, seeing as I processed the paperwork when it came in. You're lying. You're effing lying. I'll be down there soon. Okay, just so you know, if you'd like the vehicle to be released, you need to pick up a release certificate from any SGI issuer. Thanks. Click. Should add now, we have a police officer always on the property. Many threats have been uttered, and violence is a major thing here. EM and EK show up with some fancy-looking guy, and I get the paperwork ready before they even make it through the door. Turns out, fancy-looking guy is her lawyer. EM. This is my lawyer. He needs to see the paperwork right now. Okay, sounds fair. After what seems like forever, was probably only 15 minutes, the lawyer pulls EM aside and tries to quietly tell her that there's nothing he can do. EM to lawyer, you better do something or you're effing fired. Lawyer to EM, I can't do anything. All the paperwork's here and maybe I could have done something at the time this happened, but it's been well over a month now. My hands are tied. At this point, the cop is closer to the counter, listening in, waiting for any point he has to jump in. EM looks at me. Why was the vehicle impounded again? Hit a telephone pole, caused major damage, and drunk driving. EM looks to EK. Is that the truth? EK. No, she's lying. I'm only 16. Where would I even drink? EM. Told you he couldn't have been drinking. Lower your price and give us the car. The police officer says, Hello, miss. I'm just curious as to who will be towing this vehicle home. EK will be driving it home. Sorry, no. With the amount of damage done to the car, it's best that it's not driven. And considering EK is 16 and was caught drinking and driving, he has no license. EK wasn't drinking and driving. He still has his license. Excuse me, EK. Can I see your license? Uh, I don't have it on me. 
It's okay, I'll just find you on my nifty little laptop here. P.O. proceeds to pull up E.K.'s file, and bam, no license, has to go through the whole driving course again, has to pay a fine for drinking and driving and everything. He turns his laptop so E.M. and lawyer can see it. E.M., without another word, pays the outstanding balance on the vehicle, pays us the extra money to tow it back to her house, and they all leave together. The second door that closed, though, oh boy. Judging by what I could hear through the door and what I saw on the cameras, E.M. is pissed that E.K. made her look effing stupid and that E.K. would be paying her back for years over this crap. Her lawyer said he wouldn't be working for her further and got in his car and left. As they got closer to the vehicle, though, E.M. smacked E.K. on the back of the head, and judging by what happened next, he was left to find his own ride home, seeing as she left without him. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.